so you are asking about trinity yes i was asking about the trinity and i said that uh, most that many christians know about the trinity is the fact that there is god the father there is god the son and there is god the holy spirit yes but um if you ask many of us to explain how they come about how they function together as one mm. and how they also function separately as individuals many of us may not be able to explain it well so i would like to throw light on that what is the interconnectedness between the three okay and how does their individual functionality connect with each other okay that's good thank you for this question first john if you have your your bible first john 5 7 to 8 or make sure it's king james okay first john yes 5 7 to 8 okay king I'm james there. version yes yes now I'm there yeah 7 to 8 you said yes Mary. yes it says for there are three that bear record in heaven the father the word and the holy ghost mm. and these three are one yep it says and there are three that bear witness in earth the spirit and the water and the blood uh -huh. and these three agree in one yep that's that's one of the most favorite verse to read about trinity in in the bible but most of the translation most especially a lot of translation are devotional so they don't care about theological terms that are, are very significant and that is why they they will just skip chapter, chapter verse seven and just go to verse eight straight forward. So in more verses, in more of a translation, so to say, it's only in verse eight. They just skip verse seven, but it's very important. King James is a literal translation, while the rest of the translation are allegorical translation. They are not wrong, but they. They, their focus is devotional spiritual building uh so they they they, they translate it for christians not for unbelievers to read and understand or for whatever so uh this first john says um for there are three that bear witness in heaven um the father and the word and the holy ghost and we know john gave us a clear definition of this word uh in john chapter 1 verse 1 says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god for nothing that was made will have been made without the word and if you jump to verse 14 of that same john it says and this word became flesh and dwell among us that is uh, uh jesus christ so now going back to this first john chapter uh chapter 5 verse 7 and uh, verse 7 most more precisely it says for there are three in heaven that be a witness the father and the word now we have the definition of who this word is which is jesus christ and then the holy ghost and we know that the holy ghost is also god so this trinity is one of the things that make christian to be very unique very distinctive among all other religion they believe that there is one god most especially reading from this first john it tallies with exodus exodus chapter 15 verse 11 talks about there is only one god exodus chapter 20 um starting from verse 2 and 3 talks about uh, uh uh it talks about how israelites should worship no other god beside him and then reading from uh places like zachariah 14 verse 9 also talks about one god and a lot of verses most especially the shima israel the deuteronomy chapter deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4 which is the most common one here or israel or oh, Shema or oh Israel, Adonai Ilahun, Adonai Ihun. In Hebrew, it means here or oh Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. So this one God, 
manifests himself in three distinct distinctive persons and i love to call it this way this one god deal with people in three different ways he live with people in old testament as god the father he talks to people directly using prophets or choosing a set of nation to reach out salvation to him and that one that was not carried out so he has to come by himself he has to come down for himself and then he has to come down he will not come down as god we know that uh, uh god told moses you cannot see my face if you see me you will die so he has to come down as a person he has to take a human form that is why philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 all the way to verse uh, 11 it talks about how this jesus even though he is god did not consider himself god he talks about how god how jesus uh how god in person of jesus did not take the pride like lucifer did he takes a, a humility so he come down as a person and he live with us that is the meaning of emmanuel god with us so this jesus now in in philippians that i love most especially verse 11 of that philippians chapter 2 which it says um uh, uh, and in his name every knee because he has taken a, a humility so god elevated him god elevated him and based out on him the name which is above every other name that at the name jesus every knee must bow in heaven on earth or under the earth okay and then that is the same verse luke also says uh in in Acts chapter 4 verse 12 for there is no name given to man under heaven by which we must be saved apart from the name jesus christ so now this jesus is still god this jesus is god because he says that he has a power over life and of course he did he he raised up lazarus from dead after four days of being buried you know no prophet can do that and in fact a person that was buried four days ago you know that you don't want to go to his tomb because if you go there you will see surprises you will run away you will see a uh, lot of the body is already decayed and that was what mary and martha was even trying to tell jesus that he was buried please don't go there and he said show me the tomb and he brought him back to life so jesus already exercised power over life we see that we saw that one he already have life over uh, i mean he has power over life and uh we also see the holy spirit who um he gives life also jo that was what that is what john 3 verse 8 says he gives life and also judgment john uh, 16 verse 8 to 4 talks about the spirit also will judge and then talking about uh the the gifts to the church the spirit also gives gifts to the church first corinthians chapter 12 verse 4 to uh to uh, 11 and then even galatians galatians chapter chapter 5 the fruits of the spirit galatians chapter 5 verse uh verse 22 23 for the fruits of the spirit is love joy peace patient kindness goodness uh gentleness uh, faithfulness and then self-control these are the fruits of the spirit which the bible says it's been given by the spirit so each of these person are one person because there is only going to be one judge at the last day and that judge also we see that the spirit also do the judgment we know in many verses jesus christ do the judgment and in fact that was the basis upon which the jewish crucified jesus because he claims to be son of man that son of man is a saying to the israelite if you go to jerusalem and you say i am son of man you are literally telling the israelite that here i am your god because in the book of daniel chapter 
for uh, chapter 7 from verse 13 to 14 it says that this son of man will do the judgment his kingdom is everlasting and we know there's only one kingdom so this jesus is going to be the one who will do the judgment so all of these distinct persons and of course we know the father also is the one who will do the judgment first corinthians chapter 8 verse 4 and 6 timothy um first timothy chapter 2 verse 6 so all of these verses they are interchangeably talking about one rule in heaven one rule that is the judgment that is the life now jesus said he is the light the holy spirit said he gives light jesus said he will do the judgment the holy spirit says he will do the judgment so it's not like there is going to be three different judgment the father will finish his own the son will finish his own and the holy spirit no they are now telling you that all of these three persons are one person and in fact that was the basis upon which Stephen was stoned to death in the book of Acts when he said, And behold, heaven opened, and I saw someone standing at the right hand of the Father, like the Son of Man, like the one you crucified. They said, Oh, this man has committed a great uh, uh, support in Hausa. He has committed a great blasphemy, saying that Jesus. Yeah, saying that Jesus will be standing at the right hand of the Father. So, you know, if you are reading it from the normal English, it doesn't make sense. But it's as the ego of speech to the Israelite. When Stephen says, and I saw someone like the Son of Man standing at the right hand of the Father, he is now saying, where you are expecting to see the Father, that is where I saw Jesus sitting down. So that was why it becomes unbearable for the Israelite. They said it's a blasphemy, they stone him. And John also in the book of Revelation, after he was being cast to the Patmos, to the island of Patmos, that's the same thing he also said. That's the same confession he brought. He said, and I saw someone like the one who was slain, sitting at the right hand of the father. He is now saying here, O Israel, this Jesus whom you crucified, he is the one sitting on the throne wall. That father you are thinking about is this Jesus. So uh, this God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is one person. One person who revealed himself in three different distinct. Okay. And uh, John chapter 14 talks a lot about all of this. Jesus said, let your heart not... If I, may, if I may interject, if I may, if I may interject, yes. please. If I may interject to get oh. more clarification. Yes. So if you say that uh, it is one God manifesting yes. himself in three different ways. Yes. So um, I understand the Bible says that after Jesus Christ ascended mm -hmm. into heaven, he went to the Father. Yes. And the Bible says that he is seated at the right hand of the Father. Yes. So does it mean that? And then, okay, okay. I also understand that the Bible says that, that, I mean, yeah, Jesus Christ, when he was about to ascend, he promised the disciples that he was going to send the Holy Spirit that's who be with them yeah, and comfort them. And, and yes. So now, in my head, it gives me yes. a picture of two of the three in heaven and one of them now on earth being the holy spirit so is that the picture of what we should expect no it's one throne in heaven that one throne is that jesus christ and that jesus christ is god the father and that jesus christ is still god the son and that jesus christ is oh, still the, has, the holy he has spirit. now yeah, they've now they've now gone back to being one up yeah. there in heaven they, they are always one Okay, so yeah, we don't have one, we don't have the father separately, no, seated, and no, it's, now it's, it's not son, going to be the, they, the, the yeah, right to they, stay at the right hand. No, when when the okay. Bible says Jesus sitting at the right hand, it does not literally mean this is your right hand and then Father here and Jesus at the right hand. No, it says Jesus is sitting at the right place 
you are expecting to see God the Father. 